Hey everybody, welcome to the Dead Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh. Today we're going back to Melina Cicciotti. What in the fresh hell is this woman talking about now? When I get like 45 to 50, 60 messages in one day about something, it means that video has sparked outrage, <laughs> generally. Or they're like, oh my God, you know, you need to see this, is basically what happens. So I'm going to blind react to mamas. It's time to wake up. Apparently she gets a little bit crazy. So, I mean, ugh. let's go. So if you're new to the Melina Cicciotti shit, she's an influencer who used to be a dirt, and now she's no longer a dirt, but now she's just normal dirt. Now she's like a religious dirt. She's an idiot. As far as I'm aware, she has no formal education in theology or hermeneutics or anything like that. I do, and I don't believe anything she says. Okay, I was a I was a worship pastor, not a real pastor, for seven years of my life. I grew up in the church. I grew up in a fundamental church, just like she's just like the shit she spouts on this channel. I believed it too growing up. Your leaders really, really shape what you believe, and I had leaders that were fundamental. Right? I believed if you listen to secular music, you're probably going to hell. If you drank, you're going to hell. If you smoked, you're going to hell. If you had sex before marriage, you're going to hell. I believed in the purity culture. I believed in hottest beef, hottest is modest. I believe in this. I feel like she's just stumbled upon this world and she's just not smart enough to overcome it. And it's going to take her 20 years to overcome it when she starts realizing what she believes is absolutely contrary to what Jesus preaches about what us as Christians are supposed to be doing with the knowledge that we have. Okay? She's absolutely wrong. In the last video, I said something, in the last video, I said something along the lines of, the devil's not going to interrupt you when you're helping him. That's basically what Melina Cicciotti is doing. And if you read the comment section of the shit that she keeps in, because obviously she deletes all the negative stuff, there are women following this girl who will like literally lap up every last syllable she says as if it were gospel. And it is really, really scary. Social media influencers who use the gospel as a grift are absolutely in the wrong. They are they're heretical and they are going to be judged way more harshly when they get when they get to the gates of heaven or whatever. When you when you claim to be a teacher of the what the Bible is saying and you do it wrong, trust me, you're going to be judged way more harshly than those plebs who didn't know. The thing is, is she making money off it? She grifts off it? She tries to she tries to make herself holier than now? All she's doing this for is herself. She's literally idolizing herself. This platform of Instagram where you're showing off your ass and bikinis and your hair and your nails and all this shit, all that does is serve to prove that you are an idol to these people. You are yourself becoming an idol because you're an influencer. That is wrong, everybody. Idolatry is wrong. That's where we left off last time. So let's see what Melina has to say here. I'm sure it's going to be chocked full of biblical truths. Also, apparently someone said, take a drink every time she says the Lord in this one. So I got my drink. Let's roll. Oh man, here we are. Here we are again. Here we are. Nice she change your hair again. A little episode of what the Lord is. Oh my God, here we go. going to be very juiced after this. Currently evicting, teaching, feeling, working through me. So let's just have another conversation. The audacity of the God is, the Lord is working through me. Look at this $100,000 bracelet I'm wearing while we work through what Jesus is teaching. Then they will be condemned for enjoying evil rather than believing the truth. This is called proof texting, right? And I agree with this scripture. The world will be condemned for enjoying evil. Right? People are going to be like, well, I chose evil and that's where the world is. We're like, yep, you should be able to do whatever you want. Whatever. And I get that. From a biblical standpoint, the world is in a bad position. Let's just be real about that. But what she's going to use it to say is like, don't do these things. I'm The Lord is telling me to tell you to say these things. I don't think that she realizes that what she is doing would be considered evil and would be condemned by Jesus. To be an idol showing off your ass on the internet and exploiting your children. I don't even have to watch the rest of the video. It's over right now. Shut her down. This conversation is more geared toward... Look at my tattoos. That's considered a sin by the Bible. I mean, go get them removed. You damned hypocrite. Mamas. Specifically, Christian mamas. If you're a Christian mama, gear up and listen up. If you're not, don't really know that this will apply to you or that you'll get much out of it or that it'll even make much sense to you. 
you. So. Let, let me let me let me get this straight. So you're this Christian, and by your own probably words, and I'm sure if I if someone wants to find it, I'm sure I could find it too. She is she believes that as Christians we are called to tell people about the gospel about Jesus, right? But she just admitted here this video is not for those people. This video is this video is for people who agree with me already on what the Bible says. That's what she's saying. So what's the point? You're doing a video directed at Christians. So all the other people who don't believe you, who are not Christians, they shouldn't listen to this? Why? Isn't that literally the whole point of what you do here? Is to bring people to Christ? Isn't that your whole damn mission? Dumbass! How's your cute to go? Oh. Yeah, and they should go. Everybody should go. Why do they tuck half the shirt in? Is this a thing? Half the shirt? I don't even know how to start off this conversation. Not well, here's... I'll give you some advice on how to do it. Let me bring it on in. Bring it on in here. You ready? Don't! Start this conversation. You are not an authority whatsoever. And if you believe what the Bible says, and I'm not saying I'm there. I'm just saying, if she is this type of person who wants to be a fundamental believer in the Bible, she should keep her mouth shut. That's what the Bible says. Understood? I don't believe that. I believe that God can use anybody in any way to bring forth his word. If you're telling, because here's my argument on the whole on the whole thing of women in leadership and in preaching. Are you telling me you that God, if God wants to use a woman to deliver a message, he can't? You telling you put God in a box? You putting God in a box? No, God can use anybody, anything he wants. But I'm saying is she has to abide by her own principles of belief, and in this case, she's just gonna cherry pick like she always does everything. You should not be speaking on these things. It's not for you to speak on them if you believe what the Bible says about women in leadership, which I don't. I'm just saying. Okay? Cool. A lot of prayer around this. There's been a lot of questioning, discerning, testing uh, the scriptures. Oh my God. You tested. Did you test the scriptures? How? How did you? T you tested the scriptures, did you? And yet here you are spouting religious shit. Did you test the scriptures? Just the ones you wanted to test. Seeing what the word says. Oh, and sorry. Elephant in the room. I did color my hair back to my natural color the last time I oh my god so I was like discerning I was testing the bible I was throwing it back in Jesus face and I was debating with Jesus I was sitting here just going over the scriptures over my candlelight I was sweating I was in the desert for 40 days being tempted oh wait my hair everybody my hair did you see your hair you can't make this shit up everybody who the f watches this and takes it seriously had my hair like natural was so some of you had may not even known that my natural color is brown want to simplify yeah we did because we can see your eyebrows that's how we know my life nails are gone my hair is to its natural color so I don't have oh to my god the this. sin has escaped your soul the nails are done your hair is back to oh uh, the holiness is oozing can I just touch your garment and be saved please Melina the savior of the new world Oh my God, the audacity of this woman. She doesn't even try to hide this shit. I'm just ready to just like not have to do any, any of that. Yet your face is full of makeup. Mm, make it make sense. It's time for a song. Maybe I'll make it a worshipy style song for you. Melina, you are heretical. And everything you say Just shut your damn pie hole No one believes you Well, that's a lie Cause some people seem to believe you So just stop You damned liar Stop My nails are not done anymore Look how holy I am My hair's back to its original color like who gives two shits But my face is still covered in like 20 pounds of makeup So I'm halfway to holiness I am halfway to holiness I am halfway to hell as well Halfway Which also means I'm lukewarm And you know what that means I spit you out my mouth, you dumbass. Queen, yes, slay, queen.
I know this song is a parody and it's funny, but you cannot be halfway holy because the other side is stuck where it is. You can't just give God half your shit. You can't be like sitting here preaching how you're all amazing, but you're not. And when you can, we can literally see with our eyes that you're still trying to be perfect for everybody. You still are stuck there. And it ain't working. So I'm excited, but are you it excited? Still feels so exciting. A little bit strange, so I'm like still getting used to it just because it's been so many years. But I'm excited to not have to maintain my hair. But I shut your damn face hole. Anyway, side note. One thing that I have just been praying about, and the Lord just like the Lord. Good. I was actually kind of get thirsty keeps bringing back over and over and over again in my head is that we are called to be set apart from the world. I feel like slowly his... She said this last time too. And so how are you separating yourself from the world there, Melina? Hmm, please tell me. By not doing your nails? By dyeing your hair a different color? Is that setting yourself apart? By dressing the exact same way as every influencer? And putting brown and beige everywhere? And putting your face full of makeup? Is that how you separate yourself? Cool. Mm-hmm. And showing me how much I am not set apart from the world and how what I'm living and doing is so similar to what the world is doing. And so I've just been praying and just asking him like, okay, well, what does that look like in certain areas of my life? How can I be set apart from the world? And the <laughs> last time it was how to be set. How do I be so unattractive? How do I take the attention off me so people don't keep looking at me, Lord? <laughs> I'm so beautiful. It's such a curse. Look, Melina, I get it. My curse as well is the beauty that exudes from this face, right? The burden, I share that with you. <laughs> the audacity of these people. The biggest one that I have noticed has been motherhood and how I'm raising my children and how the world does things and how different it should look, how we as Christian mothers Holy cuts, Batman! do things. And so I've just been praying and being like, well, what does that even look like? Like, what does that even mean? Did I'll tell you what it doesn't mean. And there is so much evidence and proof. She is taking on this whole, I'd say from the late 70s up until now, this whole idea of this new wave of the way church works. We grew up, and every person I grew up with, okay, of those who were like, had strict biblical parents who were like, no dating, none of this, no drinking, like they, they literally held their kids to like huge biblical standards, almost all of them, and I can't even think of one that didn't, strayed at some point. To, like I can't tell you how many people I grew up with in this in this style of evangelicalism or whatever you want to call it who didn't stray because especially those kids who were like really really sheltered from the world and they get a taste of the real world when they went to that college or got away from that all of them and I mean every single this like without fail every single one of them took the other path because they never got a taste of it there is ways to raise your children inside of this type of world and then there's no easy way to do it. But one of them is to just show your kids to love everybody, right? And to let them make mistakes. A lot of Christian parents did not let their kids make mistakes. And when they did, shit went down. And so all it does is drive children because kids aren't like in as in tune to the to religiosity and all the shit as you want them to be because they're kids. And so they're just going to learn to hide that from you. Or they're going to feel super guilty about what they're doing because you've guilted them into those lifestyles. And they think that they're turning their back on the Lord or they're pissing off God or like the Lord's wrath is going to be upon them. Do you know how scary that is to teach your kids that shit? Instead, teach your kids that God's grace is infinite and his love is unconditional. When you learn those things and learn as you get older and you start realizing, holy shit, God's love is unconditional. It doesn't matter what I did. It doesn't. It matters what you do for sure, but it doesn't matter. Some people don't teach the kids about grace, about God's infinite grace. That covers all sin. They don't teach them because they don't want you to know. So I can't wait to hear this shit. Today, because it's like, okay, sure, like I get it. I'm trying to raise children to know the Lord. The Bible tells us that if you raise them up, raise them up to know me, they will not depart from him. The Bible says that, but the people who do it, do it wrong, right? Yeah, if you raise them up properly. So they'll just, she proved text here. But if you look, any of you who follow me, who grew up in a church like this, who grew up in a type of world like this, did you stick the path? It's very rare that you see that. Very rare. So what she says there is the Bible says this thing, so it must be true. When literal generations of youth prove that it's not true. I mean, it is true if you do it right, like I just said. And I think that, I think that people are saying that if you raise them right, they'll never make a mistake. They'll never sin. That's, that's not true. 
I think you raise them right. When they do sin, they realize that God is who he is and they feel comfortable asking for forgiveness and maybe changing the way they do. But so many parents just use fear instead. And I think that's what she's going to do. I'm like, okay, cool. Love that. But how do I actually do that? And so you don't actually get to do anything when you're on this platform exploiting them. So conversation over. Just praying. I was like, Lord, like show me what I'm doing that doesn't seem to be aligning with your will for them or show me how I can teach them. Prune me so I can show them like should be pruned. Seriously. God should prune this YouTube channel back to nothing. Convict me. Like I was just been praying all these things. So I'm like, cause I wasn't really sure where to start. I just first start. God's like, Melina, I'm here. Untuck the other half of your shirt, dumbass. Kept going to his words. God didn't say dumbass. And seeing what his word said. And then I just kept evaluating our lives. I kept evaluating habits that we had. Mm -hmm. I kept evaluating day in and day out what it looked like for us as a family. Did you evaluate, you know, oversharing with your children online, exploiting them? Did you evaluate that? Mm, interesting. I wonder if she evaluated that shit. Keeping them safe and protected from predators online. Did you evaluate that? Okay. Okay. So it's become very clear that there were certain patterns and stuff that we were doing in our household that just was not from the Lord and that just oh wasn't God. bringing any fruit, that wasn't doing anything to pull us closer to the Lord. If anything, it was pulling us closer to the enemy. Now, I want to keep prefacing this because I- Like what? You guys having seances and shit? What are you doing in your home that's pulling you closer to the enemy? What? I think this can come off in two different ways. One- I think she thinks color is sinful. <laughs> you will be really excited and really encouraged by this and want to take motive and take steps to take change motive? or do better. Or you'll be offended, feeling shameful, get resentful and just bitterness and hatred and all of those things and just not be happy. So she just said, either you're going to take my advice or not. And if you don't take my advice, it's just because you're bitter, resentful and hateful. She just said that guys. Do you hear that? She honestly thinks she's the voice of the Lord. You think God will use this person to speak to the world? There's choices we can make. There's different ways we can. There's choices we can make. One of those choices is stop being a hypocritical asshole. That's one choice you can make. Stop exploiting your kids. That's another choice. I mean, there's so many choices. Approach things. I just want to come with the heart of humility. Oh my God. Heart of just nothing more than love. You have to say the thing. If you have to say the thing, you do not get to come with a heart of humility when you're a beauty influencer, you dumbass. And just sharing what the Lord is teaching me right now in hopes that it oh, would sorry. encourage other women, not to shame other women, not to bash other mothers. Like mm -hmm. that is no, exactly what you're doing. Never my goal. And I'm sure it doesn't matter. That's what you're doing. And the reason why she does this is because she thinks, well, I'm not trying to bash you. But then she prefaces everything she says with the Lord is saying these things to me so I can say them to you. So if you don't listen to them, you're going to be hateful. You're this, 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 or you're going to accept them because that's what the Lord said. She just, she doesn't get it. And that's the problem with this bullshit. She doesn't even see that she says that. Sharing what the Lord is convicting me right now. So you can take that however you want. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is so far removed from you. Maybe this is not even something that you've ever remotely thought of. And you're like, that's weird that you have that conviction. I don't. Peace out. And that's totally fine. Oh, thanks for making it vain. But what I have noticed is that the Lord loves <sighs> unity. The Lord loves revival. The Lord loves to wake us up all at the same time. I Where are you getting this shit from? The Lord loves to wake us up at the same time? Where are you hearing? Where you, what, what scripture says that? I really learned that when I shared about me getting my nails removed. And the hundreds and thousands. The Lord, her example of people coming together, the Lord's waking everybody up because I didn't get my nails done. And oh my God, the response I got for not doing my nails. You see, that's how we know the Lord brings us together because I didn't do my nails. Oh my God. Thousands of messages that I got from so many other women that the Lord had been tugging at their heart of the same thing. And I was to not have their nails done. I think the Lord was saying those weird ones that are like this long that you can't do shit with. I think that's what he was saying. He wasn't saying just normal nails. I think he was just saying the weird effing ones that nobody likes. That's I'm I'll speak on the Lord's behalf for there. Stop those ones.
having a conversation with a couple of my other girlfriends who also are mothers and when I started talking about this I had such resistance to say it and such resistance to mention it just because I know it is something that so many people do and it's just a habit that so many of us have and I Males? didn't want to offend I didn't want to come off as holier you did though no I didn't want like I, I don't care what you wanted it doesn't matter what you say at all about this whole thing how about your intentions it matters about what you said and how it came off dumbass it's like i don't want conflict i don't want ugh, i just don't want to deal with that like i just want Such nothing a liar. more than good bi language she loves the conflict moms to feel empowered and equipped and like the best moms on the planet and i felt like if what i said or possibly did say could make them feel otherwise and so yes they did I was like, Lord, I want to shut my mouth. And he's like, stop shutting your mouth. I've made something very clear that I want you to speak. See, about. she is literally saying she speaks for the Lord. I made it very clear that this is what I'm calling your family to do. So just share, just share it with others. That's what I'm doing. Sorry, that was probably the longest intro of my life. But nowadays I feel like I do have to preface it because- No, I you don't have to preface anything. Everything you say is bullshit. And her prefaces are like, they, they, can, they conflict and they're- her prefaces conflict with each other every two seconds. I don't want you to feel like, you know, you should do this, but I, you do should really listen to this. I don't feel like you should be offended, but you should be offended if you don't listen to this. You know, on one hand, you could ignore this, but or you could just be a hateful bitch. You know, it's you choose. But I don't, you know, I don't, you know, do you, queen, slay. Yes. I feel like people just really take things out of context or just don't understand. No, you take shit out of context. Are you kidding me right now? Nobody, I'm listening to your words and dismantling them in real time. You're the person takes scriptures out of context and takes these the words from the Lord out of context. The context that you give us is absolutely opposite of what the Bible says. And so that's what makes you heretical. That's actually a sin. You are bad at this and bad because you're leading other people down that same bullshit path who will force this onto their children. You not see that? Anybody saying that shit? Heart behind things and the matter behind things. So anyway, was reevaluating our lives. My tattoos. I was looking at habits that we were having. I was looking at patterns that I was noticing in my kids. I was looking at ways that I was reacting to things, that they were reacting to things, how things what? came up, certain nightmares they were having, and certain things they were saying. And I was like, this is just not sitting well. I started to pray about it. I was asking family to pray about the it. The Lord. My sister was over. And I started to question things. I feel like this is the best thing. If you don't like the way something is, then question why you don't like the way something is. And again, I'm going to keep up approaching it from a sense of like i'm not telling you what to do i'm just shut up yes you are walking just be honest with people look i'm telling you the lord is if you if you have a conviction that the lord is telling you to say something stop being all wishy-washy about it if the lord is telling you take that shit seriously then right and say hey the lord's telling me i don't care what you say if the lord has given me this message to you that's my conviction if the lord honestly came to you and said say this and like like moses in the burning bush would you be like, okay, you know, the Lord can't even burning bush and you would take that shit seriously and you would just do it. You would stand on that principle, right? But she's all like, well, you know, take it or not. If the Lord actually gave you this message, it would be, it would be given a little bit more seriously is what I'm saying. It said, the Lord didn't give you this message. You are heretical, sinner, weirdo, and you're going to be judged for this shit, lady through how I have approached this. So one thing I kept noticing is from the time my kids woke up to the time they went to bed, they were asking to watch Moana. They were asking okay. to watch Encanto. They were talking about Moana. They were talking about Encanto. They were surprise, surprise, kids are enamored with cartoons. Oh my gosh, those cartoons are amazing. And all that speaks to is that you're a shitty parent because you make, you literally let Disney Plus watch your children. Oops, whoop. Whoopsie doodle. Talking about these shows and these things like all day long. And I was like, this is a form of idolatry. So I was like, these what? kids get so sucked in and so influenced by these things. And I've always been very. Excuse me. Did she just say kids like a cartoon is idolatry? Are you sure you want to go down this path, Melina? Is this where you want to go? Idolatry like that cross on your neck? That's idolatry. It's idolatry. I know people don't like that. Catholics don't like when I say it. The cross is idolatry. You are idolizing the cross, the place where Jesus was killed. You idolize that thing? I know people are like, well, it's what, it's what it represents. No, no, Jesus was the person that you should have a picture of on your necklace then. Jesus, you can idolize. Okay? You sure you really want to go here? You idolize, no, you idolize browns and beiges. 
You idolize what you look like. You idolize your hair. You idolize your nails. You idolize your makeup. You idolize yourself. You idolize other creators. Are you going to go there for real? Children don't know that shit. They don't know it's idolatry. They don't know they're putting it above Jesus. Oh, man. Careful about the amount of time that I let them watch TV, the time of day. And like, I've always been, you guys know, I, I really encourage independent play. I really encourage them to be doing their own thing. But I, <laughs> Which means watching TV. I always felt like, oh, well, so many kids love watching TV and it could give me a break. And like, I just kept thinking of these different things. And I was like, well, everyone else watches TV. Everyone, it's part of everyone's life. It's just, I, it was part of my life growing up. Like, so I always didn't question it. Okay. I just kind of went along with it and I just wanted my kids to be happy. You know, I was like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, we can watch whatever, but we'll watch it for 20 minutes. Like, I, I can't watch a movie for 20 minutes. It's a whole movie. I was, I had some loose boundaries, but then I just started noticing that there was just like an idolate ideation, idolation, idea. None, none, none of those words are what you think they mean. Idolizing. What's that term I'm trying to think? They were idolizing. They just were obsessed with these characters. Huh. Interesting that kids are obsessed with things. Hmm. That's normal. Also, it fosters a lot of cool things like creativity. Some of the things I was fanatical about when I was a kid was like comic books and stuff like that. And I drew fanatically. I didn't have the internet like we did today, but I would draw like crazy and it would like foster this ability to draw on me because I was obsessed with drawing. Like I'm, not, but she's taking obsessions with idolatry and I sort of get what she's saying there, but they're children. So you got to give them a little bit of leeway there because you fed them that shit and it's not idolatry. Okay, they might love something because they're enamored with it, but it's not idolatry. Children get off a little bit easier than adults do with this shit. Let's be real about that. And then I started noticing that they would pick up on the manners. And Mother knows best. Tones and ways that these characters would talk. And then I started okay. noticing that my kids were trying to mimic what these characters would do. Elsa has powers, aka witchcraft. And I oh, f*** off. Of course she's going to go there. Of course she's going to go there. It's not witchcraft. It's make-believe. It's fiction. What? There's witchcraft in the Bible. What? There's magic in the Bible, too. Of course she's going to go there. It is a cartoon, man. It's a cartoon. Notice my kids were trying to lash out spells and were trying to make things come out of their hands. And, and then, you know, you, you sit there and you watch them. Oh my God, I can't believe I have to say this. And you say, hey, look, notice how that magic's not coming out of your hand. You're not freezing shit. That's because it's fake. It's not real. What you're watching is a cartoon, but thanks for using your imagination. That's cool. You can, if you're a hardcore Christian who wants to teach this to your kids, fine. Okay. But just be like, hey, that shit's not real. They don't say that shit. Just be like, that stuff's not real. I'm glad that you're excited about it, but it's just not real. Have a conversation. The Bible says this about magic, but just so you know, that's fake. Elsa's not actually a witch. She's not Wiccan. She's not casting evil spells. She's actually a good person who's trying to do good things. And she was stricken with this. It's almost like a curse. Okay. So what you're saying is they're trying to cast spells. So your kids are now what the devil. Oh my God. These people, man. And then the Lord so quickly woke me up and was like, this is not okay. No, the Lord didn't do that. You're a damn liar. Honestly, people who believe what she just said there, do you honestly believe that God, that God is like these Karens and these these Kyles who, who are super fundamentalist Christian, who are like all about the rules? Do you think really God is like that type of person or infinitely more graceful and understanding because he knows everything? Do you think God really cares your kid watches frozen and pretends to do a frozen spell do you think god i honestly want the answer you think god cares do you, or do you think god cares about just raising your kids to just love people and to just be a light right because now your kid's going to go to school right and any other kid is going to cast a fake spell they're going to be like oh my god you're satan right those kids are going to be outcast from normal social groups because of what you teach them what you show them when that shit doesn't actually matter in the end it really doesn't. For, for, for all the things you could really talk about when it comes to faith and things that are wrong about and, and what gets you in trouble and are sinful, that's not one of them. It's really not one of them. Let your kids be kids. Casting a fake spell on a Pixar movie doesn't equal sin. I can't believe I have to say that out loud. And I was like, mm, okay. And I just kind of sat in that for a minute. So Did like, you sit in it for a minute? This woman sits in her own shit for too long. That's the problem here. She sits in it too long. Well, it's... So innocent. It's Elsa. She loves the smell of her own farts. Nah, they're so cute. They're sisters and they're orphans. And I, I just kept like going in my head. But yeah, no, all those things you said were. It, here's all you. To, it's a fucking cartoon. So there you go. It's not real. Because Wiccan and witchcraft and shit is real. There are evil things in the world 
that the Bible does speak against. The one thing it doesn't speak against is fake shit and cartoons, because obviously they didn't have that stuff, that aren't real. That shit isn't real. Elsa isn't based on a Wiccan culture of real spells. If you want to talk about Harry Potter, you might even be able to get there, but even that's all fake. Even that's all fiction. There is real Wiccan. There is real witchcraft. There is real devil worship and shit that happens in the world, okay? This ain't it. And what you're probably going to say is like, it's like a foothold into the next step of witch. No, it's not! Moana's so cute, and she lives on her, like, it just kept going on and on about all these- What's wrong with Moana? She had powers or what? Shows. And then the Lord made it very clear that there is so much witchcraft and so many little tiny things that look so innocent and so cute and so- Like that triangle on your wrist could be considered witchcraft. Just saying. Oh, non-destructive. And then he pointed me back to what the enemy does. The enemy is deceitful, he's sneaky, he's quiet. You don't really know and see the damage that he's slowly starting to do. It's you can get, you can, you can be super critical of certain things for sure. But they're like, especially when it comes to like what they're putting in cartoons and stuff for kids. I get that. I understand these unders. But do you think honestly, Disney's like, okay, we need to turn a whole bunch of kids into witches and wizards and shit and make them go to hell. That's what we really need to do. And a lot of people will believe that, to be honest with you. They really do. But it's just a story at this point. You could talk about other things like Dungeons and Dragons. You can get into all that other shit. Real Wiccanism, real witches and wizards and all that shit. You can really get into that stuff. Because some of that stuff can be dangerous. Like the, the, the Ouija boards, that shit's dangerous to mess around with this stuff. This ain't dangerous. So you look back and you're like, whoa, that happened. Oh my this God, happened. my kid watched Frozen. They're definitely going to hell. And that happened and this happened and it was like this slow, slow little drink of poison. It's a little what glass, the fuck? just one drop of poison. It's Like social media is a drop of poison. It's like more like a gallon of poison right down the back of your throat. And yet here you are taking advantage of it, making money off of it and exploiting your children on it. They, they rarely talk about that shit, though. Eh? Interesting. I'd love to hear Melina Cicciotti talk about the dangers of social media and the sin of social media. I'd love to hear that conversation. She won't have that one, though, will she? Uh, it's not even that bad. It's just one little drop. But then it's two little drops. And then it's three. And then it's four. And then it's five. And then... And I, we got it! We can count! Suddenly, this cup that was perfectly clear water is suddenly brown and filled with... You love brown. ...poison and deceit and lies from the enemy. From watching Pixar movies? So I was like, okay, let's try something. Both my kids have had night terrors before. Both my kids had That's woken crazy. up in the middle of the night just screaming and just crying. Maybe don't let them watch horror movies. And I would always be so confused because I'm like, where is this even coming from? Like, I pray with them every single night. I pray that the Lord protect their minds. I pray that the Lord protect their hearts. And I was like- And he doesn't? <laughs> the audacity of the Lord. Sorry, I had to drink. The audacity. So you're saying your prayers don't work? That's amazing. I thought you were like this whole, I thought you were holier than more people. I thought that God would at least listen to that. Listen to what she is saying. Don't miss it. Let's just try something. And I went through all of their books. I went through all of the shows they were watching and I made a very crystal clear line of what they could and could not watch. And oh, I hope she gives some examples. I concluded that if something does not glorify God, then we're not to watch it. Take what glorifies God in cartoons? Like you're talking about like uh, they can only watch Odyssey and uh, VeggieTales. That's all they get to watch now? That with a grain of salt. You can do whatever you want in your household. But to me, what I started noticing, and this is the really cool part. This is a part that I was like, this is it. I started noticing that my kids easily memorized songs from these movies. My kids easily recalled certain scenes from these movies. Are you, <laughs> are you saying that they can't do that with other movies? What are you saying right now? Again, this is what you do. You indoctrinate your children against... So this is called indoctrination, everybody. And this is what's really dangerous about the left and the right's indoctrination. The left when it comes to trans ideology for children and sexualities for children. Okay? And the right's obsession with making their kids super Christian for some reason. Both of these are wrong. Okay? Inherently have super... Or inherently super dangerous. Because on the right, when your kids are being this way... And you're, you're, you're hiding them from everything and you're not telling them about the world. When they actually enter into the world for whatever reason, they are going off the deep end. You're not educating them properly. Right? And they think that everything is wrong. And they tell everybody that's all wrong. And they become outcasts in their own right. They are not somebody who can spread the love of Jesus or the word of Jesus or look like that because all they are is judgmental assholes. The, the 80s and 90s raised a whole generation of judgmental assholes. And that's who's running the church right now, everybody. 
Well, the boomers are still running them, but they're upcoming. They easily could mimic lines and like just knew these books and shows like the back of their hand. And the Lord was like, let them know the Bible like the back of their hand, like they know these shows. Maybe, no. <laughs> yeah, there's some shit in the Bible your kids probably shouldn't know about to their adults. Let's be real. Fill their hearts and their minds with my words of songs of praise of me. Fill their minds with stories of the Old Testament. Fill their minds with... Stories of the Old Testament. You much murder and death and discarnage and destruction is in the Old Testament. People, there's sex, there's murder, gore. I mean, damn, there's there's oral sex. Are you sure? You mean just like, there was this guy named David and he hit a Goliath with a rock. Oh, the Lord. Look, man, the one thing I learned about the Bible is it is brutal. Okay, and you can make it. There are certain things for children, but she's like, no, the Bible in tonight. No, you're, you're going to teach your kids certain stories, which then they can use. But that's it. The Bible isn't inherently for children, everybody. The Bible is full of, like, dark and dangerous and really scary things. For the most part, by the way. Also, I don't remember Jesus being like, okay, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this, like, Sermon on the Mount. But this is only for Christians, everybody. If you're like this mama who doesn't like what I'm going to say, just peace out. Go like I didn't hear Jesus saying that. Hmm, interesting. The things that can glorify me so well right now, and just like scripture tells us, to teach them up to know these ways, to teach them up to know him, and they will not depart from him. I they will. They will depart because you're doing it wrong. Not just teach them. You, the thing that's, and, and you know, they're right. She's right about this. You can teach a child something and they will absorb it. Like the left with trans ideology and that, all that shit. Just like the right with religious ideology. Okay? It's so true. But the issue is that they never did it right. The Christians never brought them up the right way. Bring them up the right way in this and they won't depart. That's true. If you give them a real idea of what it's like to have faith and the understanding of that faith, then they won't depart. Right? It took me leaving the church and hating religion to actually understand God in the Bible more than I ever had before. Right? And that's a brutal aspect of the faith. But nobody wants to teach their kids that. They just want to teach them the, 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 the fluffy ass stories that don't really mean much. Right, that just teach them what they want you to teach them that this is all wrong, this is all right, the end. It's not the way it works for real faith. I always thought like, well, my kids are so young, like I can't read the Bible to them. They're not gonna memorize this. Or my kids are like, it's really who you know, who really cares? Like let them just just let them just have fun. It's okay. But the Lord You can do both, is what I'm saying. You can teach your kids biblical stories, biblical principles, and faith principles. And they can watch Elsa cast some spells if they want. You can do both. One, but as long as you're having the conversation, if it's so important to you for your kids not to understand witchcraft and all that shit, you can say that, hey, there is this thing in the world called witchcraft and Wic Wiccans and all this stuff and that shit's dangerous and blah, blah, blah. And you could talk about that. But here, what you're seeing in Elsa's world in Frozen, that's not real. It's not. It's a made up story. And you can, then your kid's like, well, I can decipher the difference now between made up stories, fiction and tales than the real thing. It's a learning opportunity if you really want to teach your kids that shit. It really started showing me that it's actually not okay, that these little things will affect them. And these little things is a really easy way to let the enemy put into their mind like, oh yeah, no, witchcraft is cool. But it's Nobody said witchcraft is cool. Nobody. Not wit not Frozen, not Harry Potter. Well, Harry Potter says witchcraft is cool. I'm not going to lie. That does say it. They don't say it's cool. Right? Nobody's saying this is cool because it's not real. Not really witchcraft. You know, Elsa just like has magical powers, magical superpowers. That's okay. witchcraft. Jesus has magical superpowers. Bottom line, I eliminate- It's not witchcraft. You can't just say it's witchcraft because witchcraft is actually a thing. It is actually a thing. Historically and all the way to the Bible, it is a thing. So don't say that it's witchcraft when it's not because you're lying to your children. You're lying to your children. And then they're going to learn that someday. My mom said freaking frozen witchcraft. And when I learned that wasn't, she just lied to me. My mom's a f***ing liar. Those things. And that night that I removed these books from their bookshelves, that I removed these things from their minds and just stopped watching them slowly mm -hmm. started just cutting away at them. My kids slept through the entire night. They're I don't believe a word you're saying. I don't believe you at all. Not one scream. There was not one cry. Is that a coincidence? Yes. And you're a liar. Maybe, but I don't really believe in coincidences. Another Do you not? Okay, 
Here's a coincidence. Is it a coincidence that you exploit your children online but still have no problem with that, biblically? Word for coincidence is- Coincidence, I guess. The Holy Spirit and the Lord doing his thing. I started having that conversation with a couple of friends and I was like, our kids have so much potential. Why are we- con Potential for what though? For what? To be fundamental Christians? To be useless to the world? Is that what they have potential for? Because fundamental Christians are the people who go into the world and they're saying, what they do is they approach people with their arguments, but they say the Lord in the Bible says this to people who don't give two shits about what the Lord in the Bible have to say. They are useless in the real world, by the way, everybody. Real, like fun, and I'm talking fundamental Christians who live their life by biblical standards and everything else. Some of the things they do is great, but in the real world, when they're trying to engage with people who don't believe what they believe, they are useless. Utterly useless. Because the people that you're arguing with or debating with, if they don't believe what the Bible, if they don't believe the Bible is what it says it is, or God is, or God at all, you don't have a leg to stand on. You can't say to somebody who's an atheist, well, the Lord said this. They don't care. They don't believe in that. And those are the people that these fundamentalist Christians are trying to save. They're the ones who are like, God has got me. We're trying to make disciples. But you can't because you have no leeway or movement in anything because you're so locked into law and rules and like religion that you just are stuck there and you can't move and nobody likes you. Constantly dumbing them down. Why are we constantly dumbing down scripture? Why? You're, you're the one who dumbs down scripture. Are you serious? Why do we think they're not capable of these things? Like it just proved to me that they're able to memorize these things and these songs so easily. And so I slowly started to replace our Stop moving your shirt. day and replace certain things through our lives that See, it's just I'm more worried about what I look like. We didn't glorify God. We continued. I mean, I've always read with them, read their Bibles with them in the morning, but I made more of an emphasis to do that. I replaced right. movies with other shows and I can list out. I don't want to get specific because I don't want to. Again, there's this many shows that you could watch that replace that are like glorifying to the Lord who are Christian. It's very little. Very, very little. One of them is VeggieTales, Odyssey. I can't even think of another. I literally can't think of another one. Again, I don't want to make my convictions your convictions. But yes, you do. I really highly vetted them. And vetted. You vetted them? Mm -hmm. You should vetted your own. You should vet your own shit. You guys want? I can include in a newsletter or in a blog post oh, what my kids do. are allowed. Please do. I'm to watch and what they aren't allowed to watch and how I came to those conclusions. I guess I'll just share it right now, real quick. Actually, might as well just rip the bandaid off. Big thing was my kids were really into like fairy tales, like old school, like Three Little Pigs, Little Red Riding Hood. Um, Okay, has that witchcraft? Jack and the Beanstalk, like those kinds of yeah. things. And I was like, I just, these aren't bringing any value to me. What? What do you mean not bringing it to you? Who cares about you? Those, those stories spark imagination, creativity. What do you mean they're no value to you? You idiot. What an idiot. Like they're, they're just not doing it for us. And so. No, I no, no. You're selfish and saying not doing it for you because you clearly have no imagination. Look at your house. I started teaching them David and Goliath and Adam and Eve. Did you teach them the real David and Goliath? How brutal it was? Did you teach them that part? And just different stories. Adam and Eve. That are in the... You know, Adam and Eve. Where did their kids come from? You can go all day like this, right? You're talking about Adam and Eve. Well, where did their kids come from? And then where did their kids come from? That seems like brothers and sisters are having babies together. Again, the whole Bible is really hard. Okay, so you're like, oh, I just teach them Adam and Eve and an apple and she's wrong. Purity. New Testament that are so rich and so full, different parables with life lessons. And sure, there are some stuff you're that such, have she's, Guys, I don't believe, thing. I, I know what she's trying to say here, but I don't believe one effing word that's coming out of her mouth. She is virtue signaling and she's lying to everybody. There is no way she does this. Based on what her understanding of the Bible and scriptures that she uses in her videos, she doesn't do this. Okay, maybe she has a podcast that they listen to. She can't. She doesn't have a fundamental understanding of the Bible. She gets it wrong almost every time. So I don't believe a word that's coming out of her mouth. She's lying to you. Life lessons, but I'm trying to go beyond life lessons. I'm not trying to raise up people that are followers. I'm yes, you are! I'm not trying to raise up kids that just do what they're told. Yes, you are! I am trying to raise up leaders. I am trying to raise up kids that question things. No, you're not. How... Are you shitting me right now? So you're gonna, I want my kids to raise the question things. Question what? How, what, 
they don't know anything else that, except what you've shown them. And it, you just told us that you're only going to show them the approved things of the Lord. So how are they going to question anything? They don't know the other side. What she's saying is correct, though. That's how you do raise your children. You allow them steps into the world. You allow them to watch that ship. But you have conversations with your kids. You allow them to make mistakes, to go out on their own a little bit. That's how those kids can learn to question those things. These parents, they're like, oh, I want them to question things. No, they're not. They're only going to be able to bounce that off of what you've shown them. And if you're only showing them biblical shit and like stuff that you approve, they aren't going to be able to understand any of the other side. How do you not get that? That discern things. They won't be able to discern because they don't know the other side. People with discernment, the ish, people who have gifting and discernment, they understand it because they probably lived on the other side or lived it to some degree. So they can say, hey, I know that from experience and my discernment is telling me because I've felt it, I've been there. If your kids have not been there, they will not have the discernment of it because they have no knowledge of it. How is this person on the internet spouting shit and people aren't looking at that? That know what's going on, that see things and are able to decipher if it is wrong or if it's right. No, they're going to say everything's wrong. They will not be able to decipher wrong and right. They're only going to be able to decipher what you've given them. And it's all biblical, God, wrong, right. And that's where the church has got this all wrong. It's always been about rules, wrong, right. And it's, that's not the issue. That's not a true faith. I am trying to raise my kids in a very specific way. And that was the biggest thing that the Lord showed me was that if that is how you want to raise your kid, then you need to make some big impacts. I guarantee you, if, you, if the Lord is saying, I want you to raise your kid to understand this, to be discerning, the Lord isn't going to tell you to hide them away from those other things in life. How will you discern if you have never experienced? Right? Unless it's like some spiritual gift that you have. You cannot discern. Like if you've never been in a relationship, if you grew up in a very loving home with trusting people and everybody in your life has always been amazing, how can you discern if someone has bad intentions with you and they're trying something with you? You don't know. And that's actually one of the biggest fears I have of raising these children in the world we are now because these kids don't just cannot discern when somebody has bad intentions because they have never had anybody around them with that, which is good and bad, okay? But you're not, if you don't know the other side, they cannot discern. That's it. I'm sorry. Differences in your lives because the way that you're currently doing it is not any different from the world and it's not going to make an impact. It is different from the world if you're doing half and half or teaching them. If you're actually verbalizing and having conversations with your children about these things that are important to you and your faith, then you are doing it different than the rest of the world. If you watch Frozen, but then you have the conversation about the magic and how it pertains to the Bible and what God thinks about that, cool, you've done it differently than the rest of the world. But you're not. You're just lazy. So you need to radically change the way that you do things no, in you your home. That you need to radically change the way that you view your children. You need no, to you radically don't. change the way that you allow them to be exposed to things. The word radical and children should never be in the same sentence. Ever. Ever. And not exposed to things. You need to Unless it's a radical trick on your bike, dude. That's the only way you say radical. Take back your children. They're no longer a part of these movies. They're no longer a part of these schemes and things that this world schemes? is just throwing and shoving at our kids all day long. And I can go down an entire rabbit hole of things that pop up on YouTube for kids. Don't. Okay, well, I'll agree with you here. Don't ever let your kid on YouTube. That's the thing. Don't let your kid on YouTube. You're letting your kid on YouTube? Yeah, I agree. Don't let them on YouTube. And the ads that they play when kids are watching certain shows, the suggestions that YouTube will make. I can go on and on about these things, but I won't. Do your own research. Do your no, own. No, no, no. The Lord's telling you here to give us word. That seems pretty dangerous. Why won't you tell us about any of those things? Do your own research. You do research. Something discern for yourself because all it takes is one little button to get here. And then suddenly there is very suggestive stuff on the screen or something. Don't let your kids on the internet unfettered. That's it. If you want to let them watch Netflix and have age appropriate shows, that's fine. Disney, sure. There's a whole bunch of protections you put, but it sounds like she let her kids on the internet. Well, yeah, don't let them do that. Suddenly there's very foul language on the screen and all it takes is one little click of a button. And so I'm just calling moms to be hyper aware of what we're allowing our kids to consume and not consume and just discerning and just praying. And you could just say consume. 
asking the Lord. This year has been such a game changer. I guess like the last six months have been really game changing for me in the way that I view motherhood because I surrendered my children to the Lord. My kids are not my own. They are his and he entrusted me with these kids. And now he's like, oh shit. Now you're going to take them down a path where they will not be able to discern the other side because you are literally hiding them away. To hide somebody away from the world is only going to throw them into the world unprotected when they get old enough. You are doing your children a disservice when you do that. So many parents I grew up with did that to their kids. And, and, the, and the more fundamental and the more hidden they were away from the world, the worse off they were when they got away from it. When they got away from church. Like the, they went the opposite way. Like I'm saying, the ones who are the most sheltered, the most proper, the most biblically knowledgeable and all that shit, they went the other way, man. And I think people, you you know somebody, at least two or three people in your life, if you grew up in church, that went the other way. So it is my job and my responsibility to equip them. No, it's, you said it's the Lord's kids. It's the Lord's responsibility. It's my job and my responsibility to teach them. It's my... Well, shit. Damn. Poor kids. Job and my responsibility to do what is best for them. The only way I'm able to know that or figure out what that is, is to ask the Lord. It's really that simple. It's to pray and ask him, reveal it, show me in your word. Y'all, this thing right here. Yeah, show the word then. Has every answer to every problem that we could possibly have. No, it doesn't. Come on. Stop being so naive. Does it? What about the problem of like an itchy taint? Does it have the answer to that? I wonder if it does actually. It does not have the answer to every problem. The Bible actually, for me, as I was reading it, and I do Bible stories of swearing, and I know I want to bring it back, and I will, it actually makes me ask more questions. But that gives me hope, because we're never going to know and have a full understanding. We're not meant to. You're never going to. And those people who think that they do have a full understanding and have all the answers, you should run away from those people. Okay? Because there's no way they do. God's, God is unlearnable. Okay, you'll never be on the understanding of what he had when he wrote that Bible and that God that in that scriptures God breathed. Okay, you will never have the answer. So people who spout that they have answers are wrong. Read the Bible for yourself and ask the questions that you want to ask. Because I was raised not to ask the questions. Then when I'm reading about Moses, if you go back to my Bible stories of swearing, which I have to do part two, I think is Moses. There's more questions than I have answers for. Like, why did God harden Pharaoh's heart? God could have just released the Jews like that. God has infinite power. Pharaoh was going to release the Jews. God said, I'm going to stop him in his heart, physically stop him from releasing the Jews. Why? That's a question I don't think I'll ever have an answer to because that goes against everything that has to do with free will. If God says we have free will and we do, and I believe that, why did he not give Pharaoh free will, right? That's just one example of probably many. So if there are people in your life who who think that they know all the answers to the Bible, again, they're wrong. And that's heretical. Nobody can have all the answers. So don't listen to people who say that. There are people who have great ideas and iterations of what those scriptures say, and they're amazing, and they make total sense. But they, they, I think those people like, and I think those people that are trusted like that will say that they don't know all the answers. Those are who you follow. Not a-holes like this who put a sticky note to proof text something. This thing is bulletproof, okay? This thing is the living word of God. And I'm so thankful that I have it because I would be so lost in motherhood with... You're such a damn liar. ...out this and without him. And I thought I knew all the fancy things. I like thought... I you have never... Oh, there's not even a crease in that Bible. Are you kidding me? Just because you put a couple of freaking sticky notes? That Bible's been opened four times. New all the childhood development stuff. Like I thought I... No, he said, sister, you don't know nothing. Is that what God said? Did he? Did God speak in street slang? Did us? Is that what he did? You don't know nothing. Is that what God said? Yeah, okay. So teach me. So that's kind of what he's been doing. Uh, kind of been refining that and kind of helping me see. I you're feel literal. Like your Bible's literally crisp. <laughs> okay. Like I've known some people in my life, and you can see their Bible, and they consume that shit on daily. Right. I'm not saying they're right either, but you know the difference between someone who has read the Bible and who's not read the Bible. Melina has not read the Bible, and if she has, she doesn't understand it. She hasn't taken enough time to understand. She just, she, she accepts it without question. The Bible is not there for you to accept it without question. Okay, the Bible is there for you to question, to build on your faith, to have questions, and to not fully understand it. That's literally part of it. That's the mystery and the magic of it all. Oh, sorry, I said magic, sorry, witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? 
we get to heaven, if you do get to heaven, if you're if you believe what I believe, and you do get to enjoy heaven after your judgment and shit that goes down, because I'll, you know, I know I'm gonna be judged just like everybody else. Okay? Then the answers get to come to you. You get to live in eternal happiness and health and, and education and understanding and knowledge. I cannot believe this woman is sitting here thinking that the, the, it's all solved. That here's all your answers. If that were the case, then we would not be where we are right now. He just removed the deception glasses, and as soon as he did- Hey, Joseph Smith. I was like, whoa. Things that- Whoa. Pinocchio. And things that I was unsure about suddenly became very black and white. And I That's opposite for me. When I left ministry and I left religion, things that were black and white became gray. I know that sounds really crazy. It's so true. Things that you were like, this is what the Bible says. And there's none of this, and none of that, and sin and that. Now I'm like, shit, man, that's not my place to judge you. Not, not, not necessarily that it's gray, because there are some things that are black and white. But it's like, it's not my place to be there. All I'm called to do is love you and just like, here, what do you need? That's it. These people... So all those other things that were so black and white and so harsh, I was so harshly against, I'm like, eh, let God take care of it. It's not my responsibility. Your sin, it's not my responsibility. Okay? My sin's my responsibility. Not my responsibility to judge you for your sin either. That's God's responsibility. And some people will, will tell you, no, 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 it's the church's and my responsibility to call you out if you're doing wrong because I don't want to lead you astray. Now, people know when they're doing something wrong. That's inherently built into humanism. That's inherently built into being a human. Okay? Once you learn... That it's just not so black and white. And again, I used to be that guy and it's st I'm still stuck in some of those ways for sure. It's hard to get out of that when it's been built into you for like 35 years of your life. She's a, it, it sounds to me like she's a newbie Christian. Like she just went to Christian camp and came back with all full of knowledge that she thinks she has. That's what it sounds like. I would love to understand her story a little bit more. Has she been this way her whole life or is this something new? Because it sounds like a new Christian who doesn't know shit, who is enamored with this Jesus is my boyfriend type of theology. I will give you guys a couple of very specific prayers I prayed and continue to pray over my kids. One being, I pray that the Lord reveal to my kids truly what is good and truly what is evil. They not be deceived. So then how is he going to reveal it to them if you hide them from those things? So if you let them, if you think that your prayer is going to be correct, and this is a long video, there's a lot to unpack here. If you think that this prayer is going to be effective and you trust the Lord to do that to your children, why not let them watch Frozen? Because if the Lord's doing his job like you say he is, they will understand that that's wrong or whatever, that the witchcraft is blah, blah, blah. They'll see that. But if you hide them away from that, like on purpose, how is God going to tell them that it's wrong when they can't see it? That they be able to discern that because it's so easy to make bad look good. It's agreed. No one's getting that. You know, I'm throwing out here. See what I'm throwing at you there? So easy to sneak just a little bit of lie in here. So what? Like what lie? That Fro Frozen is based on a is, is a story about. I know I'm going back to Frozen, but it's based on a story about these sisters who become orphaned, who one of them has this problems, deep seated issues, doesn't want anybody to know about, and the other one just wants to have a relationship with her, and in the end they save the kingdom or whatever. What's what's evil about that? Where can you find any evil except that she's casting spells? You think that's evil? When she does her spells for good? Is that evil? When she's when she's literally taking on evildoers? Is that evil? When they're reconciling in movie two about the evil that their, their ancestor did? Is that evil? Come on, man. Easy to just put a little... Elsa doesn't have superpowers. Elsa just has magical, beautiful hands that just shoot out snow. Or there's no witchcraft in that. She it's not witchcraft. Off. Just so happened to be able to take Ariel's voice away. What if it's... What if what if that's a God gift to her because she's doing good with it? So what? So are you saying that if someone has witchcraft and powers but they do good with it, that's still bad? How do you how do you square that with your children? Yeah, they they have witchcraft which is evil, but they're taking all those evil powers they have and doing op absolute good with it. How do you square that? Hmm. I could understand if she was evil and had evil powers and was using powers for evil, then you could say, look, it's evil, but she's using her powers for good. So how is it still evil? Man, this video has got me fired up. Woo!
going to church. Like, there's no sorcery. There's like, so I just kept asking and just feeling like, okay, clearly there's there's something here. Clearly, clearly. you need to make radical changes. Clearly, mothers need to wake up. Clearly. Clearly, you need to shut your damn hole in your face because these people who are following you are going to be led astray. The Lord is calling a revival. The Lord is- How many views does she have on this damn video? 94,000 views on this bullshit. 1,500 comments. The thing is, is that we can talk about this all day, but she actually has influence. And that's the scariest part about this shit. She's spouting this bullshit to the people that she influences and they'll believe her. That's scary because those people have children who are going to be raised in the same bullshit and become the same toxic people. And then when they leave it, they're going to be, they're going to feel guilty. They're going to feel less than, oh man, it's so bad. I wish I could tell all these moms, stop listening to this person. It's waking up the mama bears. The Lord is calling us to so much more than what the world has. He has so much more in store for our children. Like what? What does the Lord have in store? A life, a life hidden away from the world. Is that, you honestly think the Lord doesn't want your children anywhere near the world? They live here. If the... <laughs> If you are raising your kids into biblical principles, and part of the biblical principle is to live a life that people want to come to know the Lord, then how can they do that when they are only amongst themselves? They are useless for the Lord. Our kids, then this world could possibly try to even slightly offer. And I'm well aware of that. I've just been praying that the Lord show my kids to not let them be deceived, to make the evil look so unattractive and so ugly and just so heinous. I don't know if she realizes she's talking about herself. You are heinous and ugly. You exploit children. One of the worst, I I, I, don't I cannot believe that she just overlooks that she's a child exploiter. And you think, gee, honestly, Melina, you know, I know you watch this. I need you to pray to the Lord that you love so much, that you, that you trust with your prayers, to show, to ask him to show you if what you're doing with the exploitation of children is right. Is it a sin? I need you to ask him that. Then take your kids off the internet because he's going to give you the answer. And I know you don't want to pray that prayer because you know you're going to get the answer. And make the good look so appealing and so beautiful and so light and so true to God's character and to who he is that they not have to be deceived. That it's just so black and white that it's like, oh, that's not what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Yeah. That isn't that one I'm gonna watch. That isn't the one I watch. When I brought this up to my husband, because here's the thing, I've been saying this a lot, but I sound kind of crazy. You, yeah, because you are crazy. It is crazy what you're saying. Even from a Christian theological perspective, you're crazy. You're nuts for doing this, for saying this to people. You're perpetuating nothing but law, religiosity, wrong and right, black and white, and it's not the way the world works. It's not Jesus either. It is not. If Melina Ciciotti was Jesus, thank God she wasn't. If she was, and Jesus was Melina Ciciotti, and she came upon the prostitute at the well, she would judge the prostitute. She wouldn't dry a lot in the sand and protect the prostitute. She would absolutely not. She would condemn the prostitute and then tell you all about how she, the Lord told her to condemn that and that you should condemn it. But, you know, you don't have to listen to me or whatever, but just I condemn, condemn prostitution. That's what would happen here. You are so far removed from the Jesus teaching and who he actually was, but you think that you are him. That's nuts to me. You might be thinking, there's nothing wrong with that. Listen, I had that conversation with my husband. When I brought this up, he was like, babe. You suck. Really? He's like, oh my God, is divorce okay now? You really gotta stop, keep someone, go get into some hobbies. Cause like- Yeah, seriously, that's what I would say. He's like, you're making me exhausted. And I was like- He's right. You are wrong. He's right though, you're wrong. And excuse me for bringing up biblical principles again, but sorry, you need to submit to his leadership. I, that's the Bible, not me. That's if you believe what this thing says in your hands that you barely freaking crack, then you submit to what your husband says. The end. I know I'm exhausted too, but the Lord, why do you talk like that? Don't do that. It's just waking me up. He's removed these deception glasses and I can't see no gray no more. I just see black and white. Okay. <sighs> Okay, and I slowly started to explain this to him. He was like, well, how are our kids going to influence if all you do is shelter them? That's what I said. And I was like, valid, I get that. But here's the thing. I no, no, no. Answer the debate, answer the question. I am the gatekeeper of their innocence. I no, you're not. Your husband is the gatekeeper of your family's innocence or whatever. The way that your family moves, according to the Bible, if you are going to be this fundamentalist, douchebaggery face, head, lip, face, makeup, hair person, okay? Your husband makes the rules. You follow 
those rules. I didn't make the rule. You're the one standing up for the book that makes those rules. And yet you're not going to listen to that? I'm responsible for the young minds. And I am called to show them what Christ is like and what the devil. So you're not going to answer the question? I, I, he asked the question and you're not going to answer it. I don't care if they don't know the other side. You just said you want your kids to have discernment. And he said, well, how are they going to have discernment if you don't, if they're not, if they don't know what's on the other side? Well, it's up to me. You didn't answer the question. You just skirted it. Like, it's not that I am sheltering them. It's not that I am. It, so whenever she says something here where it says, I'm not doing the thing, you need to translate that to, I am doing the thing. Okay. Holding them to me and being like, no. Yeah, you are. This no, it's exactly what you're doing. This evil. No one get around my. No, it's exactly what you're doing. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Equipping them head to toe with the body and armor of God. Oh my God. And letting them fight for themselves. No, you're not. You're not equipping them. You are not equipping your children. If you keep them hidden away, if your kids don't know anything else but this, they do not know the other side. They are ill-equipped to deal with it when they are not living with you any longer. You know your kids are not going to be with you forever, right? You know they're going to be influenced, right? You know they're going to have friends eventually. You know they're going to be influenced by people that don't believe what they believe. And so when you hide them away from those things and don't educate them on those things, they are ill-equipped. And when that shit hits them, they will have no ability to combat it. None whatsoever. And they will fall like that. The weakest Christians I've ever known are the ones that said they were the strongest. Equipping them to be able to go out there and say, with their little swords, with their breastplates, with their helmets, no. This is not what is from God, and I am equipping them to discern that. No, you're not. Don't say discernment. You can't say I'm, dis I'm equipping them with discernment. You are. You're equipping them with religiosity. You're equipping them with the Bible. Sure. You're equipping them with fundamentalist Christian. Sure. You're equipping them with arguments that the Bible says. Sure. But you are not giving them discernment. You are not giving them discernment. You are stupid. Now, I'm equipping them and showing them what witchcraft is. No, you're not, because you're taking that away from them. What it can look like, what the enemy will do to make it look innocent. And here's the thing. She's so cocky right now, the audacity of her right now. She's all like, see what I'm doing? I'm doing all these things. And the opposite is true of what she's saying. She's so sure of herself. She's so sure. And she couldn't be more wrong. That's the craziest part. What he And that's the danger, okay, of celebrity Christians and pastors. Because they can get up there and be like, communicate like this. And they can be like, I'm so sure. And they're like, amen, sister. She's so sure. Amen. You can be up there and spout things because you have personality. Okay? Some of the most dangerous people in Christianity are pastors who have large followings. The most dangerous people are people that say they speak for the Lord. Okay? That's what's dangerous about this. And if you go to her comment section, you'll read the shit that she left in there. Like, yeah, it's queening her. Okay. Just because you say a thing doesn't make it so. Back that shit up. Especially if you're going to use the Bible to stand on it. We'll try what little drop of poison he'll put so they can discern and see that from a young age. Because then once they grow up, it only gets easier and easier and easier to spot. And all they got to do is wave the little Bible around. No, they don't got to wave the Bible around. Say, mm-mm. No. When I had anxiety when I was 30 and I was like having panic attacks and I could hardly breathe and I couldn't sleep, I thought I was going to die. Okay. It was the worst thing ever happened in my life. I tried everything and I don't want to take drugs for the rest of my life. Okay. I was on lorazepam every day of my life. I was taking Zobaclone to sleep. I couldn't. That's how bad the anxiety and panic was. And it was obviously it stemmed from my childhood and it hit me crested when I was 30. Okay. I was willing to try anything. And the one thing I didn't try was uh, um, homeopathic medicine. And someone who we went on tour and we stayed at someone's house and she said, look, I had the exact same anxieties you had. And I went to this homeopathic doctor and she gave me arsenic. And I know I've said this a million times. You've heard me say it. And I said, I will try. I was so desperate. I said, I will try anything. I called that homeopathic doctor. She sent me a micro dose of arsenic and some other shit and some gum and some other rubs and stuff. Okay. I'm not saying you should do this. I'm saying it worked for me. Do not take arsenic. Okay. Go to a, a doctor, a homeopathic medicine, whatever. I took the arsenic, the microdose, and it might not even have been. I don't know. Took it under your tongue, let it dissolve. You did it for three days or something like that. I kid you not, in three weeks, my anxiety was literally all but gone. 
Now, the reason I say that is because I had to take a tiny bit of poison to regulate something that fixed in my body. There's something to be said that you're so heavy and weighed down with something, even if it's religion, Christianity, and virtue, and godliness, and everything else, that if you don't have a touch of the other stuff, that as soon as that stuff touches you, it's so, you're so blatantly pure white, that as soon as a, just an inkling, a tiny bit of black paint touches you, you turn gray. Okay, no amount of white will overcome one tiny drop of black. No amount of white will bring it back to white. Okay, so if you're not equipping the other side, the poison is kind of like something that's just inherently something you're going to have to deal with because you will have sin in your life. She's, ta- she's speaking here like your kids will never sin, ever. Will never have to struggle with any of that stuff. And she is making them, she's making it impossible for them to overcome it when, it actually, when the f-ing rubber hits the road. Impossible to overcome. I've been taught from a very young age that that is evil and that is wrong and that is not how God wants it. I will have no part of that. Okay. We'll see. You know you're wrong about that. It's going to be the absolute opposite. Oh, I didn't know any of this and now I'm tasting the fruit of this thing that I'm not supposed to have and I'm going to take a taste of it because I'm human and humans do this. Humans are evil. We are inherently going to do that. When Eve ate the fruit, that's just proof. Okay. Your kid is going to try it. And when they don't have any discernment and understanding, it's going to taste, it's going to be like you've never had the taste of chocolate in your life and all of a sudden you have chocolate. Oh my God, I want the chocolate. Or like from, uh, from that show, he's like, once it hits your lips, it's so good. They aren't going to be equipped. You got to let your kids have a little bit of the poison. I know that sounds really bad, but that's, I'm using her moniker. You got to let your kids into the world a little bit or they're going to fail hard. And so it's not so much that I'm sheltering them, I'm just equipping them. No, it's exactly what you're doing. Equipping them. No, you're sheltering them. I'm giving them the... But you're saying you're equipping them, but you're sheltering them. The power and resources to influence instead of being influenced. No, you're not. You're not giving, you're not equipping them. You're equi- you're, you're ill-equipping them. How can, you equip, how can you equip a soldier to go into battle without first fighting some battles, without learning how to fight against an enemy? How can you like, okay, you're all equipped now. Go out and fight. I don't know who, who's the enemy. What do I, I don't know what I'm looking for. You're not equipping your children. Stop saying the thing, but it's the opposite thing. Until I know that they are at that point, I will be on guard more. And until I see that they They will never be there, can discern, they can question, and they can be leaders instead of followers, then I will slowly let my arms open up. Will you? You're so gracious. A little bit more. Oh my God. Parents out there who are Christian who follow me and who follow her, don't listen to anything she says. Parents who've, who've raised kids inside the church, hands up. Okay, we're not adults, full adults and left the church. Hands up. Do you think what she's saying is correct? Do you think that's going to work? Maybe to a tiny percentage of people it'll work. But for the most part, it won't. Jill Duggar, I think the Duggars, the, one of the kids came out just recently, did an interview, which I should cover, where she's like, I grew up in that shit. I'm done with it. Almost all of them. Fucking Josh Duggar grew up in a world like she's explaining right now. Where's Josh Duggar right now? In jail because he's a fucking predator. I'm not saying they're all like that, but I'm saying you are not equipping your children. Especially when, I mean, Christians and sex, don't even get me started. You want to talk about incel culture? That's these kids who have grown up thinking that sex is the dirtiest thing in the world. It's the most sinful thing you could possibly do. We shouldn't be afraid of sheltering our kids. I'll tell you this. The That's a lie. Yes, you should be. world wants nothing but the worst for your kids. <laughs> the d- Why did you laugh about that? If you believe what you just said. <laughs> you evil Cheshire cat. That's so evil what you just did there. The world has nothing but terrible things for your kids. <laughs> Why did you laugh about that? You don't want anything good for your children. You don't want your kid to, you, you're so scared of the world because you lived in the world and you went the other way. There, Melina must have some deep, dark shit that went down in her past that she is so scared that her kids are going to go down that path. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but if you hide them, they're going to find that. It's, Melina, you might not want to hear this, but you are casting a generational curse onto your children. Just so you're aware. Be careful. The devil literally wants nothing but the worst for your kids. Who wants the best for your kids? You do. Who wants your kids to thrive? You do. Who wants your kids to be equipped? You do. And how do you do those things as a parent? Hide them away from it all. Melina has not seen the crudes, and it shows. The world wants nothing but deception and death for your kids. That's stupid. No. I mean, it's out there for sure. Don't get me wrong. We are in a really terrible place. That's, 
There are good things too, Molina. There's great things out there. There are people who aren't even Christian who give their lives for other people. There are people who donate and feed others who aren't Christian. There are Christians who do it too. There is so much good in this world too. Why are you ignoring all that? And I can confidently say that. Oh, can you? Well, we believe you after all the shit you just said. You absolutely have the authority to say all that. The world will not protect your kids. Who is the owner and master of this world? The enemy. What? The devil is. The devil does not own the world. The devil has free reign inside the world and is absolutely, I agree to a degree what she's saying here, saying the devil has free reign and owns like most of the institutions. If you believe that stuff, yes, I would say that. God still runs the world, man. He owns the shit. He made it. He's the creator, literally the creator of the world, owns it, could do anything he wants, but allows people free will to do what they're going to do. So I get what she's trying to say here, but it's wrong theologically as well. Like everything else she says. That is very, very clear in scripture. It's very so, but you live in the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, what are you going to do? Very epic. I, I love this woman who has so much conviction about not being a part of the world, but is a f***ing social media influencer with over 600,000 subscribers on YouTube. In the world that we live in today, that he rules this world. How can we so blindly think and say, well, yeah, no, they'll be fine. No, they're good. It's good. That's Why are you talking like that? And you're you're giving it one way or the other, right? You're saying, well, just let them go do whatever they want. They'll be good, which also is stupid. But if you're raising kids from a Christian perspective to be biblical kids and all this stuff, you also can't hide them on one side without the other. Sorry. So they're not going to be good either if you do what you do. This, that, that's being deceived. That is being flat out just deceived and very oblivious. And I didn't want to be oblivious anymore. Was well, you're absolutely f***ing oblivious. Sorry to break the news to you, Melina. You're the most oblivious person I've ever seen anywhere speak with authority on the Bible. Oblivious. Nothing she says should be taken seriously. Lord, wake me up. Take these deception glasses off of me. Stop Take saying these that. contacts out. I want to see black and white. I want to see full black and white, no more gray. All right, Melina, there's no such thing. There is one thing that is black and white of faith, and that is to love people unconditionally without judgment. You are not called to be the fucking judge of people. That's black and white. That's really the only thing that is super black and white because anybody can take a scripture or phrase and turn it to anything they want, and the world is proof of it. Okay, there are pastors out there who are transgender and gay. They have taken the scriptures and turned it to whatever they wanted. And it's sometimes hard to argue with. I'm telling you, there are people who can turn it to whatever they want it to be turned into. Okay. But the one thing remains black and white, no matter what you believe to love, to not judge. If you do those two things, my God, the world would be a paradise again. I don't want to live in no gray world. I just want to see what is true. And if it's not true, you live in a gray world, you beige asshole. Then it's false. It's really that simple. <sighs> I feel like there's a lot more I could say. Oh, I'm sure there's probably a lot more you could say. But again, I just don't want people to go into a place of shame and guilt. I just. No, no. Are you saying if you don't listen to, are you saying if we don't listen to you that we're going to go into a sh place of shame and guilt? Are we going to live in distortion? Is that what you're saying right now? I want people to go to a place of change and a fire. This is oh my, my God. This video. My prayer is that this ignited a little, just a little spark in your Oh, it sparked some shit and ignited a lot. I don't think I've ever had a video so full of contradictions ever in my life, especially when it comes to biblical shit. You sparked some shit. That spark is don't ever listen to anything Melina Ciciotti says ever. That's, that's the fire here. Or just a little, tiniest little flame because soon that- It's not a flame. It's like a fart wind. Little tiny spark will become a roaring flame within you, mama. And you're going to find that mama bear inside of you. And you're going to call on the Lord to equip oh you and help God. you. Oh my God. And it is going to be the best thing for your kids and for your family. No, it won't. If you do what she said here, it will not be the best thing for your children, especially if you believe in Jesus and what the Bible says. It will actually be detrimental to your children. The end. That's all you have to say. I don't know what your kids watch. I don't know what they don't watch. I don't know what... I don't... don't say the opposite thing. I don't know what they watch and what they don't watch. Just say, I don't know what they watch. You don't have to say the other thing. I know what your household looks like, but I know how my household looks like. And, and it's beige. I know that what it looked like is not what I wanted it to look like. And within a second, you have a the power second. to change that. Within a 
second. It's so hard to think like, oh, there's gonna be such resistance or oh. Stop looking at yourself in the viewfinder. This is gonna be so hard. This seems so daunting. All it takes is you to do something about it. Now what that something is, I might not be able to tell you because I don't know what you're- You just said- How long is this? 22 minutes. Though you knew what you mean. I don't know what that is. You just told us what it was. You serious? I can't believe the contradictions that are coming out of this woman's donut hole. Family dynamic is, but the Holy Spirit and our Heavenly Heavenly Father can. And so just pray that he guide your every single step moving forward. Like surrender your motherhood to him. Surrender your marriage. You should surrender your shit to the Lord. If Melina Ciciotti actually surrendered herself to the Lord in the way that she tells you to do it, she would no longer be on the internet. She would not be exploiting children. She would take everything down that has any inkling of sexual innuendo at all whatsoever in her blood. I can find it in two seconds, okay? She would be disappeared from the internet if she actually followed her own principles. Surrender your life to him because then he'll guide your footsteps. You know what's best for my kids. I think I might. You think that what God's plan for your kids is, is to literally hide them away from every bit of everything? You think that's God's plan for your kids? You honestly believe that? Tell me you believe, tell me you think you believe that. I failed in the past. I know I have. I you failed now. You failed in this whole video. That you won't. And so, guy. And she's saying she doesn't fail now. No, this is the biggest failure of your whole life. You should have just stuck to being a thirst trap. At least you're honest. Me and leave me with these beautiful blessings that you've given me. I am going to be coming out with several resources. Oh, can't wait. I want to teach their kids because the Lord has just taught me so much. And I'm like, wow, I was so deceived and so unaware of like what that practically looks like. And you are still deceived and unaware of what it practically looks like. You're wrong. You have not opened anybody's eyes, except for morons who follow you. You are you are absolutely more blind than you were before. So as the Lord is teaching me, I would love to humbly show oh, what that looks like, pray that it encourages someone else, and pray for revival and pray for unity and that we not be intimidated. Is this how you, unity? Is this unity you're looking for? <laughs> by this, that we not be ashamed by this. Unity? Anybody who doesn't believe me who's not a Christian, don't watch this video. So unifying. Feel guilt by this like that's not that those feelings are not from the Lord Those are not things that he gives us. You know, what he gives us, Run it he gives out. us love and gentleness and peace and so many beautiful fruits of the spirit Well, you don't have any of those shits. So the Lord has forsaken you shame and guilt and hatred and all of that is not from the Lord as soon as you feel like going That stop stop and remind yourself is this from the Lord? No, so Remove. Okay. You're stupid. And she. My kids are home now. Love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Okay. So I'm pissed about one thing, major thing that she said here. She said her husband said, "No, we're not doing that shit. That's so stupid." And she said, "Well, what about the influence that they like? Well, how will they have discernment if they are not exposed to anything?" And she didn't answer the question. Answer the question. What did you say to your husband? And if you said the shit that you said there, if you're the husband in this situation, I'd be like, "Nah, you're dumb." This marriage is not going to last. Guarantee you shit. That shit's going to be over ASAP. I don't. I give this marriage five years. This guy is going to be running for the hills eventually. This type of person does not inspire someone to stay with them because they're so black and white and they're so, and they're, it sounds like she's getting more fundamental as the day goes on. Somebody tell me her transition from thirst trap influencer, you know, showing your tits and ass on the internet to being where she is now. What happened? I need to know her story because she sounds like a baby Christian who's just listening to the wrong people. And that's, we all went through that, but we went through that when we were young, when we were stupid. And so I need to know that. So if you know that, please tell me. Anyway, if you stuck around for this whole video, that was a long one, but there was a lot of freaking truth bombs in there and she's stupid. Please don't listen to anything she says. Okay. You don't have to listen to anything I say either. Go read the Bible for yourself. And here's my last bit of advice on this whole thing. Read the Bible for yourself. And if you must have someone preach the Bible to you, make sure it's not someone who says they know all the answers. Because I promise you, they're lying. And that's a sin. Everybody take a deep breath. <sighs> Exhale the sin. Yeah, it's there. The... Guys, make sure you bring up your kids balanced. If you want to believe this stuff, fine. But make sure you're not hiding and sheltering them away. Because kids are useless to the world. They really are. They become utterly useless. It is not saving your children to, to, to shelter the shit out of them, to be a helicopter parent, it's not. I promise you, and you know that. I think most of you know that. Most of you are awesome. But you're, and, and you're amazing, and incredible and valuable. Don't you ever forget it. Don't fly flare. And forgive yourself if you need to. Melina wouldn't tell you that, but you should. I'll see you tomorrow.